All right, again, friends, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Man, it is 2023. Also, like, what day is it? Like, it, it must be Sunday, right? Church is happening because we're here. But we're just emerging out of that weird time between Christmas and New Year where we don't know, like, what day it is, who we are, what is we're supposed to be doing exactly. There's this timelessness that we've been in. And whenever we find ourselves here in this threshold, like emerging out of the holidays and into the new year, it's the new year, new you time, right? Which means we get this extra dose of really, it's just extraordinarily toxic, manipulative diet culture stuff disguised as health, wellness, and self-care right now. It's just coming at us. And we do need to take care and, and care well for these bodies that we have, but that's not the message that comes through, right? We are bombarded with messages about resolutions that our bodies need to change and all we have to do is like muster the willpower and plan to make it happen to get our best life now, right? When it's far more nuanced than that, right? So I just wanna call that out in this moment, how we're emerging out of the holidays, timelessness, and that we're in that time of year where there's this assault on our bodies as not good enough. Add to that just the onslaught of RSV and flu and COVID cases rising, like we know our bodies are living through a lot right now. And here we are, right? Which is why we need time after the holidays time like today on uh, New Year's Day to recuperate, even, even after a normal Christmas, right? But to rest and reorient and be loved in these bodies of ours, which is the perfect, perfect thing for us to do today because it is still Christmas. Merry Christmas. And so do you also remember that the God of the universe has come among us, that love is born, that God saw it fit to dwell in the physical body of an actual person in Jesus, which basically says that it's good to be human. It is good to be in a body. It is good to be on this earth. It's good to be flesh. It's good to have emotions. It is good to be uniquely who you are. God loves matter and physicality, and God's goodness, God's soul is infused into everything, including these bodies of ours. Woo! These bodies don't just carry around our soul, but they are our soul. The Bible doesn't split the two. We are whole. We are, we are non-dual beings, which makes that lyric from O Holy Night so powerful when it says, long lay the world in sin and error pining till he appeared and the soul felt its worth. Ah. Today, we wanna let this arrival of Jesus incarnated in an actual body on this earth and in our lives, we wanna allow our soul to feel its worth in these weary, gorgeous soul bodies of ours. So at this moment, when we're depleted and our culture is shouting at us about how our bodies need to change, we want to affirm how the incarnation of Jesus commissions us into a more full-bodied incarnation of our own, knowing and loving these bodies of ours. Which is why this sermon time, these next few minutes, I want to review something that we've done before at this time of year. We're going to do a little more experiential and embodied uh, time in this sermon by trying three really simple ways for us to let our bodies offer us their wisdom. You know, we think of our cognition, our thinking, we think that it drives our experience of ourselves and our lives. It does, uh, we do, we are a body mind, a body brain system, but more often, actually nine times more information goes from body to brain than from brain to body. Is that surprising to you? That our bodies have so much to say to us when we take the time to listen. And it has been so hard to listen. So that's why we're gonna make time to do that now. So we'll experience together three simple practices that will let us get into our bodies today, uh, both for the sake of practicing it together now, then also letting these be three just incarnational practices that you can take with you for use throughout your day, every day, okay? Does that sound good? 
Cool. So to frame our experience, we let the word of God speak over us and inform this practice as we turn to John chapter one, starting with that very first verse, the beginning of John's gospel. So John's gospel, it's just, it's more poetic and metaphorical than the other three gospels, the other three biographies of Jesus. So there's no account of Jesus's birth here at the beginning of John's gospel. There's that, that's not how the story starts for John. Instead, John's gospel begins with this poetic picture of how Jesus is the word of God that was spoken into this world, yet how the word Jesus was God and was with God through all things that were made. So we're gonna hear that now through the message, paraphrase that version of this text. We get to hear how God became flesh and blood. Here's John 1. The word was first. The word present to God, God present to the word. The word was God in readiness for God from day one. Everything was created through him. Nothing, not one thing came into being without him. What came into existence was life and the life was light to live by. The life light blazed out of the darkness. The darkness couldn't put it out. The life light was the real thing. Every person entering life, he brings into light. He was in the world and the world was there through him. And yet the world didn't even notice. He came to his own people, but they didn't want him. But whoever did want him, who believed he was who he claimed and would do what he said, he made to be their true selves, their child of God's selves. The word became flesh and blood and moved into the neighborhood. We saw the glory with our own eyes, the one of a kind glory, like father, like son, generous inside and out, true from start to finish. Oh yes. So I invite you just to let that good, weird, wonderful word of God settle in you. As you roll your shoulders back and feel yourself here, wherever here is for you. As we move through these three experiences, these are things you may already know. And as we do them together, we let ourselves not just talk about the incarnation, but actually practice being it. And if this just isn't for you right now, and you're like, nope, not going to do it, that is totally okay. Participate as much or as little as you feel comfortable. Okay? Okay. So the first practice I want to introduce is a deep exhale. So many of us know that when we're stressed, we're told to, oh, just take a a good breath. But we don't always know what that means. So actually breathing in through the nose and then pushing it out with soft lips is the way to do it. So pushing with a gentle force, pushing that air out. So breathing in through the nose and then doing that little flappy thing with your lips. It's kind of relaxed, and you can even have um, a little bit of kind of like a moan that comes out with it as well. So I need to try that just in through your nose, and then out. Just finding your own pace, um, and that what we're doing as we, as we exhale in that way, we're releasing our round muscles, and that's really important. It signals to our parasympathetic, parasympathetic nervous system that we can settle down, that we're safe. So if we feel stressed or overwhelmed, we just do that inhale through the nose, pushing the air out. That can be really helpful. I'm not gonna get into all the neuroscience behind that, but it's good stuff. So keep keep doing a few more of those, that inhale through the nose. Maybe try one more. As you're doing it, make sure you let those shoulders drop and just push that air out through your mouth. Okay. Man, just having done that or having watched me do that, see if you can notice what's happening in you. Just take a moment to check in with yourself. That's an important piece of it too. Just notice if anything shifted. Notice if you felt something. Notice if something came into your awareness. It's so important to not try to like judge or evaluate, just like if you don't feel any different, that's totally cool. Like just be curious and compassionate and just kind of notice what's happening as we go through this. You may wanna keep doing a few more deep inhales and exhales, letting it all the way out. 
I know for me, I was noticing as I'm doing this that some of the noise in my head is kind of quieting down. I feel um, like a sinking sensation, like my body is more grounded here, which is pretty cool, okay? So that's it, that's our first practice, just a big exhale, releasing and softening those round muscles. Really simple, yes? Yes. Really easy to do in the car. All right, second one is called a squeeze and release. And if you're familiar with the language, it's also called a progressive muscle release. And there really are extended ways of doing this with your full body, but there's also just brief ways to do it too, especially if we're noticing a lot of intensity in like certain places in our bodies. What we do is simply, we squeeze that part really tight for 10 seconds and then release, pairing that release with an exhale and letting it go. This is really useful if you're noticing that you're feeling angry, you're feeling like, ugh, like keyed up, this is a really good one for that. So even just to check in now, like do you notice, are you holding energy anywhere in your body right now, like tension? Sometimes I'll find I'm doing something like, gosh, why am I standing like that? I'm like cranked in a weird way. Um, you might feel some tension in your hands or your jaw or your feet or somewhere in your legs. So wherever you're feeling tight or feeling an intense emotion in your body, um, that's what you want to pay attention to. And anytime we find that, the key is that we start with that spot by tightening that spot in our body, those places that are feeling that, which feels counterintuitive, right? But we, but we do that first, instead of just like trying to relax, we actually, we use up that energy first by tightening it, and then we can relax. Otherwise, that energy just has nowhere to go, and we're trying to like shake it out, but it just won't go. So let's try it. If you want to practice with your hands, or if you have a different spot that feels tight and you want to focus there, that's great. Um, so let's, let's practice it with our hands. Okay, so make your hands into tight fists, and you're just going to squeeze as tight as you can. You may even notice a slight shake, and we're just going to count back from 10 in our heads. Oh, yes, and then, whew, and then exhale, relax the muscles. Do a gentle kind of shake out, if you can, of that part of your body. Let your hands come to rest on your legs. What do you notice? Man, I'm noticing that energy is definitely flowing. I'm, my pulse is up a little bit, I think. I'm noticing the flow of my body down to my toes again. So if you can notice what happens for you, um, man, I'm feeling it's like a little easier to exhale. So we're gonna do it again, okay? You do it a few times in a row, but let's do it again. So let's do tight, ready, go. Really tight, tight, tight. And we're just counting back from 10 in our heads. Yes, keep going. Oh, my jaw's clenching too, that's funny. Okay, and let that go. Release with an exhale and relax into it. Hands on your lap. Let that breath do whatever it needs to do. Notice anything that's happening. Do you want one more squeeze? I think I do. Yeah, okay. Let's do it. Ready? Tight. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and release. Whoa. Again, if you want to learn more about that, you can look up progressive muscle relaxation or release. Extraordinarily helpful if you need to... Man, it's great for when you're going to sleep or if you need to use up that extra energy. You can teach your kids to do this too, use up some of their energy as well. It's a great one. All right, third and final, again, just simple practice is simply just stopping and holding ourselves. And you can do this a few different ways. You can cup your hands around the back of your neck. If you were here last year for Advent and Christmas, we talked about how our nefesh, our neck, is a very sensitive spot, vulnerable spot for us. So just holding the back of your neck and relaxing your arms down. That's one way. You can cup your face and then rest your arms on your, on your belly if that's comfortable. Or you can put a pillow there as you rest and just relax, release completely into that. You can also rest your hands at the center of your chest, just kind of stacked on your heart, holding yourself there. Or you can cross your arms in front of you and you let your hands cup the opposite elbow gently. So you're just kind of holding yourself and then find where that rests and, uh, and let yourself just hold yourself there. And this is, any of those are a great thing to do when you're feeling lonely or disconnected, sad, afraid. And as you hold yourself, you just let your breath breathe you. Let it do whatever is needed as you just let your system like rest and be comforted. Notice if you're kind of holding tension or not relaxed in a certain place, let that settle. You may find like waves of emotion come up or your breath catch in a certain way. 
And just let whatever rises in us come and just to breathe through it. Feeling, feeling a little release of emotion. Yeah. Keep holding yourself and breathing, okay? And then again, just asking the, like, that compassionate noticer shows up, right? To pay attention to what's happening. I invite you to stay holding yourself in whatever posture and until you feel like it's complete. So pay attention and stay there as you need to uh, for the next few minutes. So that's, that's it. Okay. Is the energy in the room or wherever you are, has that shifted? Is it different than it was before? Are you noticing that you have shifted, that you are different than you were before? Just simply through these three easy to do incarnational body-based practices and you can spend like hours, years doing these, right? They can just be things that you come back to. I invite you to let these be resources for you. I found it so necessary for me to schedule time in my day to do these kinds of practices. And so as it is still Christmas, we just had the chance to practice incarnation, beginning with our experience of our bodies, knowing that it is in and from these bodies that we get to be Jesus's incarnated body of love and salt and light for our world, right? So as you head into the new year, I want to just gently tell you in the cacophony of wellness industry goals and battles and just all the things that come at us that your body is good. It is good right now. Right from the beginning, our bodies were good and affirmed again in this messy, quiet, intimate birth of Jesus in Bethlehem. So as I consider just my own body with my own journey with my own body, for me, like I'm learning like slowly and diligently to practice peace or shalom with my body over these last years. Since my concussion and post-concussion syndrome journey began, man, sh shalom with my body is... I'm just learning that it's not just, peace doesn't just come on those days when I'm symptom free or when I'm able to like do all the things I need to do or when I'm a certain size or when I'm feeling physically strong. But shalom with our bodies, it's not just for the days when we feel good or we take up less space or when it's working well. It's right now, this body in this moment. Barbara Brown Taylor writes how, there comes a time when it is vitally important for your spiritual health to drop your clothes, look in the mirror and say, here I am, this is the body like no other that my body, that my life has shaped. I live here, this is my soul's address. Yes, I just wanna tell you that finding our soul's address to be lovely and good again as we are is such good holy work to come back to that place. So New Year's resolutions, I know it's, they can be good, I know a lot of us have goals and intentions, perhaps precisely because of the lack of control we've had in these last few years of the pandemic, right? And that's fine, it's actually really good because loving our bodies doesn't mean neglect, it means loving kindness and intentional care. But perhaps, just perhaps, you could make it your intention this year to rest from your battle against your body and simply embrace it with peace and love and joy and gratitude. Maybe you can take time to exhale deeply and to just hold them. Maybe you don't need to shrink and shrink and shrink. Maybe your creases are lovely. Maybe you should buy comfy clothes and laugh more and ditch the shame. Maybe your body is made in the image of God they are telling you the story of your life and they are worthy of your love. Maybe you need to make peace with your body at this age, at this stage, at this size, this ability, this capacity. Maybe it's time to love your body. I know it is for me because God made our bodies to be loved and Jesus' birth, the incarnation, is God's once again emphatic delight in you as a soul body who is beloved. So listen to them. Use these tools or others that you know that you can practice them while you're at your desk, when you're on the toilet, when you're in the shower, before you go to bed or right before you get out or right before you get up in the morning just to let your body speak and thrive and hold the tender or stressed or broken and beautiful parts of it as a whole. And as we close, I simply invite you to answer this question, like what is God saying to you in all of this, in what you've experienced, what you've heard and what you've thought about, felt? 
What is your response to this as we have spent time as incarnation together? What is the word of grace and good news that you will bring forward from this into the new year? Whatever you answer, may we all be commissioned to let our soul feel its worth for love is born and Jesus is here and our bodies are the very place where we are met by God. So let's enjoy them. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. God, it is a new year and we begin this new year, 2023 with such longing and such hope. Won't this year be better than last? It sure feels like that's the only option. And yet, and yet, we know there are no guarantees for what will or won't happen this year, which is why today, this day, we open and align our hearts with yours, being the incarnation of your love, by controlling what we can, by doing what we can, by practicing being people who live and love these bodies that are our souls. And we listen to them, we listen with them, for just by starting here in our own hearts and bodies that we can metabolize whatever comes at us this year, including how we become your salt and light and love and embodiment in this world, so in need of your good news of great joy for all people. So thank you, thank you for how boundlessly you love and support us, God, this day and always. Amen? Amen.